to worship this Sunday, March 5th, the second Sunday in Lent. I am Pastor Laura, the pastor for the Southern Albemarle Charge of Mount Zion United Methodist and Scottsville United Methodist. And it is a good and a joyful thing to be able to worship with you today. I invite us as we begin worship to take a moment and pause, to just breathe deeply, breathing in the Spirit of God, breathing out the cares and all of the burdens we are carrying so that we can open ourselves up to the Lord. And if you are new, if this is your first time joining us, welcome especially, and I invite you to let us know. We have a link to a Google form in the description of the video where you can let us know that you're here, um, and you can give us our contact and your contact information if you'd like to hear from us and learn more about all that we are doing. I invite us now to pray. Let us pray. Great God, give us open hearts and minds. Give us a vision of you as you are and of the world as it might be. Touch our lips. Give us words of truth for one another. Then set us free to do what you ask of us. For Jesus' sake, amen. Our opening hymn is Seek Ye First. Let us sing together. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 through verse 25a. And when I say 25a, it just means we're going to read the first half of that verse. So listen to these words from Paul. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I do that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. And I know that sometimes Paul, especially in the book of Romans, can be a little hard to read or to understand as a first read through. So I invite you to maybe rewind the video, watch, listen to that scripture read again, or to find it in your own Bibles to, to really start to understand what Paul is saying here. Starting in about third or fourth grade until I graduated high school, I would spend six nights every winter up at Massanutten Ski Resort. Our local parks and rec department had a really great deal for six weeks of lessons, lift tickets, and rentals. And so I learned how to ski and snowboard. But I'll admit, for the first couple of years especially, I was a scaredy cat. I struggled learning how to ski and I distinctly remember using the orange fence to help me stop at the bottom of the bunny slope. So it took me some time 
to work up the courage to make my way up the mountain. And what would make it worse is that the conditions weren't always the best. I mean, we were not guaranteed that nice, soft, powdery snow on the slopes. And in fact, if my memory serves correct, icy conditions were more the norm. That meant everything was faster and scarier. It was easier to feel out of control. And while I would compare my wipeouts with my brother and my friends, I also didn't exactly relish falling down. And what was worse for me was starting at the top of some of the slopes. The top always seemed to be the worst. It always felt like it was the iciest up there. And there was always a steep decline to get into the slope. I mean, I knew that once I let myself go down, I'd be able to find my way. But my heart would always beat a little bit faster, a little harder, as I made my initial descent. It was hard to just let myself go. I thought of this experience as I was contemplating the next phrase we are studying in the Lord's Prayer. As we journey through Lent, through this season of preparation, of contemplation and meditation prior to Easter, we are studying what Jesus taught us about prayer and specifically looking at the Lord's Prayer. And so last week we looked at the opening line, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This line reminds us that God loves us, that we are God's children, that even though God is Lord and creator, God is also our parent. And that since this prayer is supposed to move us and change us, we are the ones through whom God's name is glorified and shown to be holy. So what is the next line that we are going to study? Well, let's listen to a reading from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Listen for the word of God. Jesus said, Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Our line for today is, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One book I was reading on the Lord's Prayer makes the claim that this line is the essential theme of the prayer. The book says, quote, Father Daniel Harrington, a Jesuit scholar, notes that in this petition we find the central concern of the entire Lord's Prayer. In fact, it is the central concern of Jesus' entire ministry. His teaching, life, death, and resurrection focused on announcing God's kingdom, inviting people to be a part of it, and encouraging people to not only pray, but to live in such a way that God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. End quote. There is a lot of truth in that quote. Throughout Jesus' ministry, we see him announcing that the kingdom of God has come near. In fact, we believe that Jesus inaugurates, that he begins the kingdom of God here on earth, but that it isn't yet fully established that the full establishment will happen when Jesus returns. So as we live in this in-between time, we are to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we were studying Jesus's Sermon on the Mount, we were reminded that throughout the Gospel of Matthew, we need to have a question percolating in the back of our minds. Who do we choose to follow, Jesus? or Rome, Jesus, or the political power of our day? We see that question again underlying this prayer. When we pray for God's kingdom to come, for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are asking for God's rule. We are choosing God. We are asking for God's way of doing things to come about here on earth. We're rejecting the earthly ruling powers in favor of God and God's values, such as mercy, love, peace, and justice. God's concern for the vulnerable, the marginalized, and the outcast. This is what we are praying, and this is a powerful prayer. This line also reminds us that God's will currently isn't being done on earth. A common platitude we hear after disaster or tragedy is that such an event was an act of God or that it was God's will, but no. 
I firmly reject those ideas that God wills us to suffer or for bad things to happen to us. That simply doesn't square with the biblical witness of God's love for us. Now, that does not mean that there are not consequences for our individual and collective sins. And we also know that accidents happen, that gene mutations occur, that sometimes life simply stinks. But that is not God's will. That's part of living in a broken world. We wouldn't need to pray for God's will to be done if God wanted all of the bad and messed up stuff in the world to happen. I mean, rather, that bad and messed up stuff is not God's will. God wills a different world. Again, the, the book on the Lord's Prayer that I was reading reminded me that if all of this bad stuff were God's will, then Jesus wouldn't have healed anyone. He would have just told them that, well, it's God's will that you're blind or that you have leprosy or so on. But that's not what he did. Instead, Jesus healed them. And those miracles were signs of how the kingdom of God was coming near. And even though we can trust that God can redeem, that God can bring about something good even in the midst of awful circumstances, that does not mean that God willed for the bad stuff to happen. So what does praying for God's kingdom and will to be done have to do with me skiing and snowboarding? During the month of January at Scottsville, we would end our worship services by singing the song sent out in Jesus name. So let me remind us of the lyrics. Sent out in Jesus name, our hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is ours to do to set it really free Oh, help us to obey and carry out your will. I think that song sums it up pretty well. God is not a genie who magically makes everything better. Instead, God partners with us, which is a staggering thought that God has partnered with us to at least give the world a hint of what the kingdom of God is like. God has partnered with us so that we can do our best to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes, to do that work of love, of justice, and of peace. This is intimidating. This is what reminds me of staring down the mountain. It's not easy work. There's going to be rough patches and times that we skid when we're not sure what to do or where to go. There will be times we just have to trust in God and and go to take the leap down the mountain, even if we can't quite see the way. And even when we've done this a time or two or three or more, it can still be intimidating. I mean, I was skiing and snowboarding on those slopes for nine, ten years. And even towards the end, I could still get scared. My heart would still leap into my throat because the conditions change. No run is ever the same. No time partnering with God is ever the same. But that is what we are praying for every week, perhaps every day, every time we pray this prayer. We are praying that God partners with us to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. We also know that we can't do this work alone. We have to partner with God. From the beginning of the Bible, when the man and woman disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, we humans have struggled to do God's will. And we heard that in our first scripture reading from Romans 7. We know what the good and just, the peaceful and loving thing to do is, but we don't always do it. That's why we pray for God's kingdom to come and for God's will to be done. We need God. We need to be partners with God, for God to guide us and give us the courage to resist temptation, to give us the courage to take the plunge and to do the work of God's kingdom. What does all of this mean for us in practice? Well, we can see how serious it is for us to pray for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done. It's not a prayer for the faint of heart. This is a prayer that means something. And it is a prayer that calls us to act. So 
I hope I'm not scaring us away from praying this line. My hope is that we stand at the top of the mountain and know that God is with us, that we can take the plunge. Because you know what? When I was at the top of those slopes at Massanutten, what helped me was repeating over and over again, God help me, God help me, God help me. It was my breath prayer before I even knew what a breath prayer was. And it gave me the courage to take the plunge. So this week, I invite us to pray the Lord's Prayer and to pray this line with intentionality. And then I invite us to look around, to look at those places in our communities where God's kingdom needs to come. Where is the division or hurt? Where is the hunger? Where is the struggle? Where is their need? Where is their loneliness? Where is their heartache or despair? Who needs to see a sign of God's love, peace, justice, and mercy? Look around. See those places and people. Maybe it is someone we know, but maybe it is a stranger. But look, see, and then act. Let our hands be partners with God to make God's kingdom come for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So if you've been worshiping with us online for a while now, you might be tired of me saying it, um, but our Lytton study is getting ready to start. I am very excited about this book by Magre de Vega, his book, Savior. I'm talking about what it means when we say Christ died on the cross for us. So again, if there's anyone who wants to have an online version or you just want to read the book on your own and then have someone to talk it, talk about it with, to talk some questions through, please let me know. Go to that Google form, drop a comment in the video here. Let me know um, if you're interested so that I can join you, so that we can work something out. And as always, please make sure you are on our weekly email newsletter. Again, you can go to the Google form to give us your contact information. That's probably the best place to, to get our attention. Um, but that way you'll know what's going on in the life of our congregation and you'll get to learn about everything that's happening and see where you might want to fit in and what you might be able to do. Let us now turn to the Lord in prayer, holding before God all that is on our hearts and minds. And so let us pray. Holy Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. And thank you for where we have seen that love at work in our lives. Thank you for the blessings of the daffodils that are blooming. Thank you for being able to breathe fresh air, for the warmth of your sun, for the blessings of shelter and food. Lord, thank you. And Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come and your will to be done because as we heard in the sermon, we know it's not happening. We know your will is not done in many places. And, and we know, Lord, that there are many who are going through difficult times that that is not your will. And so we pray for you to be present, for you to redeem the difficult situations, for there to be good that comes from them. So we hold before you specifically those who are on our hearts and minds, remembering those who are sick and injured, and we pray for their healing. For those who mourn, that you will comfort them. For all who are unsure that they could possibly be forgiven, Lord, that you pour out your mercy upon them. For all who are struggling with mental illness, that you shine your light and love and guide them to the help that they need so that they do not despair, but can have hope. For we, your people, to do the work you have commissioned us to do, to go and make disciples. 
Now, Lord, we pause in the midst of these prayers to, to hold before you what is unspoken on our hearts and minds, but also to simply sit in your presence and to listen for your voice. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We take a moment now, as always, to pause and give thanks to God for the generosity of, of everyone connected with this charge, with Mount Zion and with Scottsville, who are giving of their gifts, so that I know that includes some of y'all, that are giving of your monetary gifts to enable God's work to be done in our communities. If you would like to make an offering, you can send that to P.O. Box 280, Scottsville, Virginia, 24590. That address is in the description of this video, and then it comes to the church office, and we'll make sure it gets to the appropriate place. But let us pray. God, thank you for these gifts. Bless them so that we, your people, can use them for your kingdom to help Show how your kingdom is coming to do your work and will. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our King. Amen. Let's join together and sing our hymn of thanksgiving and praise, the doxology. Our closing hymn is Sent Out in Jesus' Name. Let us sing together. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is ours to do, to set it really free. Oh, help us to obey.
receive the benediction. Lord, send us forth this week, ready to take the plunge, ready to partner with you to do the work of your kingdom, to do what you will. So send us forth with your strength, with your grace, to do this work. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.